Hey guys, it's time for the episode you've been waiting for. In this episode, we're checking out the engine. And uh, in this part, we're gonna check out all, all of the external parts of the engine, like the turbo, the manifolds, the piping, the exhaust, and all of that stuff. Uh, for the more in-depth stuff on the internal stuff, you have to wait for episode seven, then we will show you the rods, the pistons, and all of that good stuff. So let's get rolling in episode six. So, uh, I thought we should start out by checking all of the piping of the car uh, because then we can remove it and look a bit closer on the different parts. Uh, first off, uh, to begin the cycle, we have the intake uh, filter. It's an AEM dry filter. It's four inch connection and I don't, it's a tall filter. I don't know exactly the measurements. Uh, this uh, has been connected and welded by my friend Johan Halvarsson. He uh, has done this intake pipe and uh, one of the special features here is that instead of having a hose, hose and clamp we are using an o-ring instead. So this seals up against the turbo and it's a pretty neat nice looking uh, setup because then you don't have to have the clamp. Also one thing to mention is that we are using an air, uh, air temperature sensor here as well to log the intake temp and compare that to the charge temp. So it's pretty good for logging. Um, short info about the turbo. This is an EFR 9180. It's a ball bearing turbo, but um, we're gonna check more on this in the next part here, but let's move on with the piping. Uh, on the exhaust side of the turbo, we're running a, a Tial wastegate. It's a two and a half inch uh, pipe going out. So it's a 60 millimeter wastegate. Uh, TL Sport MVR60. Uh, we'll be running this wastegate since we, be, since we built the Turbo CLK and uh, no problem so far, so we can really recommend that. The pipe down is the Screamer pipe, it's a two and a half inch going straight down under the car. Nothing special about that, but uh, it makes the car sound a bit better, uh, in my opinion at least, more aggressive. Uh, the downpipe, however, however, is really custom because this is a three and a half inch downpipe and then we come down to here and it splits up into uh, two and a half inch pipes. All of this is stainless steel as well and heat wrapped as you can see. And this is also our uh, Lambda uh, air fuel ratio sensor that we run for the ECU. So when we move back a bit for the exhaust. Uh, as I told you, it splits up to two. Uh, these are both two and a half inch stainless steel. Uh, these are made by E. Carlson Steel Design. And my friend Jimmy uh, also helped out building this. Uh, the reason we went with this is basically most for ground clearance. Uh, because the car is built from the beginning for a V8. Uh, they have tunnels going underneath the car that makes it possible to fit it very good. So it's connected by V-band here and it uh, has uh, flex pipes on each side to not crack the manifold or stuff like that and connected to the gearbox mo mounting points. And then we have another split here, uh, it's straight after the gearbox and this is makes it possible for us to run two different types of uh, end pipes. Uh, first off we have this, this is the muffled version. We had the race cats before, but now they're empty because it's not a regulation anymore. Uh, this pipes makes it possible for us to make the 95 decibel uh, limits that we have on the Swedish tracks. So we need these to be able to compete. But my favorite ones are these, of course. Uh, these are straight pipes, no muffler or anything. It makes the car sound much better uh, and uh, looks better overall as well. So that's pretty much it for the exhaust. Uh, now we're going to check out the uh, pressure piping. Uh, this has also been built by uh, Johan Halvarsson at the same time he, when he built all of the piping. 
So you can see here we have a really tight output from the turbo, uh, pie cuts and uh, really nice welds by Yuan. One of the things that's a bit special here is that we're using a V-band co connected directly to the turbo. Uh, this is made possible by doing a custom clamp here that Special Svarv helped me make. So it looks really good and also seals up good. Uh, otherwise we have a temp air temperature sensor here as well. This is also just for logging to compare the charge temp versus the intake temp and this way we can find what helps to get down the charge air temperature into the engine. Uh, the pressure pipes are connected with the vibrant clamps. So uh, you have a o-ring on each side, you can see here. Uh, this o-ring has the equivalent on the intercooler and uh, to seal them up you put this ring on on both sides and with this on you have complete sealing and uh, to lock it in place to make sure that you don't uh, fall off or something that when you're driving you just try to put this on if I can do it now when we're filming it's always harder then and uh, just to lock it in place you have this small sprint just put it in like like this and you actually have the possibility of moving it around a bit so it's not completely solid that people think it's actually able to move quite a bit you can see it when the boost hits in the dyno uh, for the intercooler we're running a four inch uh, core a pretty big one as big as we could fit between the frame rails and uh, yeah it's keeping the intake temperatures down enough for us to work with but uh, it's a bit heavy so I would like to have a more quality brand to get the weight down a bit and then for the last uh, pressure pipe same thing here made by uh, Johan Havarsson uh, he connected the new performance blow off well uh, really good sounding and has, hasn't failed us all the way back since 2011 I think when we run it on the supercharger really good stuff so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, next up, I thought we should uh, move over, uh, remove all the pipes and uh, check off all of the manifolds and all of that good stuff. check out the manifolds so we're starting on the intake side to try and keep it in a logical order order uh, so this is also built by Johan Halvarsson uh, and uh, he helped us build the complete thing we did the uh, intake flange but uh, everything else he has welded and done so really thankful for that job because it's a gorgeous welding job and I couldn't have done it myself so really happy for that uh, first part is the throttle body. This is actually a Volvo original throttle body from a 960. Uh, 3 inch in di diameter and uh, gives a good throttle response. And uh, Because it's an original part it's good quality and hasn't had any problems with it so far. So that's a good tip if you're looking for a, a throttle body. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, I think it's a 5 inch pipe here that has been uh, cut up on the side and connected through a 3 inch pipe. Uh, this kind of uh, two chamber intake manifolds are known to give a very good and even flow to each cylinder, especially when you have a long engine like the six, uh, inline 6, it's kind of a good thing to have. And also it's pretty strong because the pipe is very strong uh, when it comes to taking the pressure inside the intake so that's why we run this and also look good and uh, one of the details that a lot of people notice is Jeremy Clarkson's smug face uh, otherwise we have the flange that we made uh, this also uh, uses the original o-rings uh, that the intake manifold uh, seals up with 
So we have machined in the O-rings into the flange. So you don't have to have any gasket or stuff like that. And also we have, he actually machined in here. It's a bit dirty, but the mounting points for the fuel rate. So our new performance fuel rate fits straight in and uh, has yet to come off, so it's good. Uh, moving over to the other side. Uh, this is the exhaust manifold. Uh, it has been coated uh, with aluminium, but uh, you can see it's uh, like a bit spotty here and there. And uh, I think the reason that it has come off is due to a chemical reaction when our radiator water has leaked out on it. So don't mind the coating. It's been working good, but something happened when we got the fluid on there. So um, the manifold is done, done by cast iron, I think it's called. No. Not cast iron, but it's made of regular iron, uh, not not uh, stainless steel. It's uh, just regular black iron, as we call it in Sweden. Uh, it's a pulse split, so that means that you're uh, running a twin scroll on the turbo, and you want to separate the three first cylinder with the three rear cylinders because you have exhaust pulses going one. Well. Every other one is going to one chamber and this helps the turbo spool up faster and uh, gives an overall better response for the turbo. Uh, the reason we didn't take stainless steel is that in the long run this material lasts better and has less tendency to crack. So it's just a rel reliability thing that made us choose that. So now we comes to the big player in the room. Uh, this is the turbo. It has been delivered by uh, Swedish Turbo Service here in uh, Gothenburg. They're just a couple of hundred meters from my garage and they're one of my long-term partners. They always help me out and make sure that my turbo runs flawlessly. Uh, so, as I told you before, this is a 9180 Bohr Warner turbo. It's a ball bearing turbo and has a 68 millimeter inducer and a 74 millimeter exducer. So, insane amount of response and uh, has been running this for three seasons without anything failing on it so far a uh, really good turbo and uh, one of the things that we run that a lot of people might not i don't know exactly but it's recommended at least from my point of view and the svans turbo service is that we run it water cooled so we actually put in water in the bottom and take it out on the uh, top side here uh, the reason you see this small connection is here is that we actually use this to air out the uh, water system. And so in one of the lines goes all the way back to the radiator in the back and helps to bleed out the system of air. Um, so yeah, twin scroll as I said, it's an AR 1.05, uh, so nothing too big of an uh, exhaust housing, but uh, it su suits good for this engine. Uh, short info about the engine is that it, this is the M104 3.2 liter. Uh, the engine is available in 2.8, 3.0, 3.2 and 3.6. Uh, 3.6 is an AMG version. Uh, but uh, for this engine, this actually started out as our backup engine, but now it's our main engine until we have the time to build those two over there. We have a bit of a M104 warehouse here. So 3.2 liter and it's a M104.992 for those who are interested. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the intake and the exhaust, exhaust manifold and the turbo. So let's move on and check out the, everything that goes on the belt and also the dry sump pan and all of that stuff underneath. So let's go. we should check out the belt drives a bit. Uh, we already gone through a bit of the dry sump setup in the, I think two episodes ago, or maybe one episode ago, I don't, yeah, two episodes ago, episode four, I think. Uh, but however, uh, the things that we use on the belt drive is the uh, alternator. Uh, this is a Mercedes 115 amps uh, alternator. Also, we have converted this to the biggest wheel we could fit. Uh, to make it spin a little bit fa uh, slower when we're revving the engine so much. So 
it helps save the altimeter a bit and makes it last longer. Otherwise we're running the original damper, uh, flywheel and damper or what you call it. Uh, so harmonic damper I think it's called. Uh, so we're not remove that, a lot of people do that, but I think that's the wrong option and this is a better one. Uh, on top of that we're running a kind of an adapter to make the uh, dry sump pulley fit, but we also use this to mount our 60-2 trigger. So this is just a regular uh, magnet magnetic 60-2 uh, trigger and we use a regular VR sensor sitting here. Really basic setup, it's easy to adjust and also cheap to rebuild if something were to happen. Uh, might want a bit of a more exact mount, but time is of the essence, I guess. And then we have the regular free rolling pulley. It's uh, routed like this around the power steering pump and going over that and down. So we have a good amount of belt hitting the uh, crank. And so it never slips on the crank. I uh, can show you shortly here. The dry sump mounting point here uh, has completely re set up the whole left side. This means that we can't, can't run the original steering power steering pump and also the original water pump. The reason we did this is because we're running the water through the water pipe. We've gone through this already, but uh, and this made it possible to mount the dry sump pump and also we took a power steering pump from the SR20 engines, so Nissan S14. Yeah, really a small compact unit and easy to mount. So it's complete mount all the way up and covers up all of the mounting pounds for the water pump. Uh, let's flip over the engine and just check out the hoses and uh, how the dry sump pump moves the oil back to the back and forth from the tank. So let's flip. So we managed to flip the engine safely this time. <laughs> it's a bit of a hassle because there's so much weight to it. Uh, so yeah, this is the dry sump pump, this is the new performance oil uh, uh, oil pan, the billet one. Shortly, just to explain how the flow of oil goes, is that this line here uh, is connected all the way back to the dry sump tank in the trunk. Uh, it's routed here and this sucks oil through this, creating pressure in this plugged off one here. This goes through the oil cooler and then uh, into the filter and into the engine and lubricates the engine. Yeah, we've gone off this a bit in the episode 4 but not able to see the oil pan in that one. When the oil has gone through the bearings and uh, through the cylinder head and all of that good stuff and going down to the oil pan, uh, then we want to suck all of the oil out and send it back. Therefore we have a really low profile oil pan connected with four of these scavenge steps. These are connected to the pump here. So as you can see, uh, one, two, three, four, five suction steps. These are all connected to one main line, this big one. This is a dash 16 and it runs back to the oil dry sump tank in the trunk as well. So this is the flow back and forward. And then you have one of these lines going under the engine over to the turbo, catches all the oil from the turbo and sends it back as well. Inside of each of these connectors, these are dash 12 if someone's interested in that, has a small scavenge filter. So it's like a small filtration device, uh, just like a net that stops the big chunks of debris from going into the pump and possibly destroying the pump. So. That's about it for the dry sump system, if you wanted to know that info as well. Um, this small part is bolted up. This is actually a part of the old uh, oil pan. The reason we put this on is to protect the flywheel assembly and the bell housing from getting dirt into it. Because uh, our old setup, uh, actually we ended up getting some small debris coming into the clutch and stuff like that. So. This is just a protection plate. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for episode six. I hope you enjoyed it. As uh, and as I told you, we will go more in depth on the physical.
parts of inside of the engine for episode 7 so stay tuned for next week we will come with you that episode and i hope you enjoy it so make sure you subscribe like it comment what you thought about it and also share it with your friends so talk to you soon